Hey guys, Josh from the Ancient History Guy here. Hello and welcome to all. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Today we are going to be diving into the mysterious history of the ancient Celts. Specifically, why were there so many Celtic migrations from their homelands of Switzerland and Gaul, and how did they come to dominate Europe? Well, let's find out. So, to give you guys some context, Celtic culture originated in the mountains of Switzerland. The mountains of the Alps, situated in these lands, had always been a safe haven for humans, noticeably during the Ice Age, where the mountains protected them from the encroaching winter. This, together with the fact the lands had many lakes and rivers, made it an ideal place to simply just stay put once the world had warmed up. Gradually, the people of this land began to develop their own culture. However, the very alpine walls that had protected them and allowed their culture to develop without much outside influence would also begin to hem them in. This was most noticeable when the population of the area began to increase, ultimately forcing the people to start venturing outside of their old homelands in search of greater resources. This was the start of the first Great Celtic Migration. Around this time, there were two main proto-Celtic cultures, Laten and the original Hassalt culture. Gradually, as trade between these newcomers from Switzerland and the natives of the region of France and Spain became more frequent, so too did the exchanging of ideas and culture. Laten Celtic culture became the dominant culture in the region. With the Celtic heartlands now largely established, these regions became known as Gaul in France and Celtiberian in Spain. Indeed, the main reason for Celtic expansion into these lands seems to have been because of trade, especially in southern France, where the Celts were fascinated with the produce of the Greek colonies in the area. Spain in particular seems to have had large and readily available iron ore deposits, something the highly skilled metal workers of the Celts were very interested in. Indeed, the Celts of Celtiberia became widely famed for their metal working capabilities, notably trading with the locals, the Carthaginian slash Phoenician colonies, and the Greeks in the area. As the Celts of Celtiberia became more and more wealthy, it began to sway many locals into their way of life, all wanting to imitate the success of their new neighbours. As a result, Celtic influence in the north of Spain began to rapidly increase, eventually converting many of the non-Celts to their way of life. This process wasn't a sudden transition, in fact there are many written examples of a weird merger of native Hispanic languages and the Celtic dialects, leading many to dub this merged dialect as Iberian Celtic. In fact, there is some evidence that some of these migrating Celts were not themselves ethnically Celts, but were rather natives of Northern Europe that had themselves adopted the Celtic culture much like the Iberian Celts were now doing. The Celtic expansion to Spain is perhaps a great example as to why and how the Celts expanded outwards from their homelands of Switzerland. It seems the expansion from their homelands seems to have been primarily based on the idea that there was money to be made in the iron production industry in Spain. As a result, large sway of Celts seem to have peacefully moved into the region, simply so they could set up shop, start making metal, and use their skills to produce high quality weapons and armour. Indeed, it seems, using the Celts in Spain as a case study, they were actually very warmly welcomed into the region. Perhaps this was because the Celts are largely seen as being the ones who brought northern Spain out of the Bronze Age and into the Iron Age. Perhaps this offering of technology warmed them to the locals, who very quickly began to try to imitate them. They were, after all, the more advanced peoples in the area. They were richer, more prosperous, and were able to create quote-unquote cooler stuff. This would explain why so many native Iberians started to copy the Celtic culture, noticeably adopting it as their own to the point where it became the dominant culture in the region. This copying of a more dominant culture isn't just limited to the Celts. If we want to look at another example, just to prove I'm not talking absolute rubbish, we need only to look on the other side of the Mediterranean towards the lands of the Middle East. The first known civilization in the region, and indeed the world, originated here in Mesopotamia. Now, the Mesopotamians pioneered many technological advances, notably the wheel and writing. They were also great builders, building huge temples to their gods in their cities. As people transitioned from copper to bronze, trade erupted, as different cities scoured the world looking for the precious ingredients of tin and copper, which were rarely found next to each other. As a result, they began to exchange ideas and stories with the people they were trading with. These people would occasionally travel back with them in order to witness the great achievements of civilization. This movement of ideas and people eventually resulted in more humans settling down. Notably, they used the Mesopotamians as a sort of example of what to do. This is most apparent by the fact that there are very similar temples to be found in Mesopotamia all over the Middle East, and even as far as field as Sardinia and Corsica. I think it's therefore quite safe to say that the Celts served a similar role in the less civilized regions of Europe. 
notably Northern Spain, Gaul and Britain. There were of course other civilizations which influenced these regions, creating their own unique style of Celtic culture. Gaul for one was highly influenced by the Greek traders along the south of the region, and so as a result you see a larger collection of big towns in France compared to the more isolated and in many cases pure Celtic regions of Britain. Even then, Britannic Celts' identity seems to have been influenced by the successive waves of Celtic incarnations in Gaul. Noticeably, the Belge tribe, who had trading colonies in the southern portion of the island and regularly traded with their Celtic cousins. This meant that the Celts of Britain were in theory re-influenced by their mainland cousins. This is a bit of a tangent, probably worthy of its own video, so let's get back onto the subject. So what can we conclude from these case studies? Well, we can conclude that the Celts started migrating from their homelands mainly because of better trade prospects abroad. In Spain, the Celts were able to bring with them their skills in ironworking and create a whole industry around the art form. Indeed, their very presence as being an advanced civilization convinced many of the locals who were less developed Iberians to adopt similar customs in an attempt to emulate their new prosperous neighbors. This seems to have happened all over wherever the Celts went, as it seems certain aspects of their culture were appealing to those who encountered it thus spreading it even further away from the epicenter that was the Alpine mountain ranges. What do I think of this? Well, I think it's quite a fascinating concept. Truth be told, I was fully prepared to just write a bog standard script talking about how the Celts gradually expanded outwards from their home territories, but I sort of discovered a newer way of looking at the process in the process of writing this script. I think the notion that the Celts were the role model society to a lot of the underdeveloped civilizations is an interesting one, especially exemplified by the archaeology in Spain. This wasn't the first time it happened, and it seems to have happened again and again. I find it absolutely mind-boggling that some of the Celts that were influencing the native Iberians into living their way of life were themselves not true Celts, implying that this process had happened before to them. But those are just my thoughts, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.